tonight we go ahead and do our tithe and offering. That way we can get into service and just keep on going. Mm -hmm. Well, there can't nobody to be like Jesus.
can still see the steeple Little church on a hill
Lord, and you and Rachel want to come and sing a song this morning before we.
count in the house. As blessed as we are. And, uh, I like that young girl's talent. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Praise God. We were supposed to have a, a special singer this morning. And uh, <laughs> I was kidding with... Uh, Sister Loretta the other day, I, me and Jeff took a road trip uh, a couple of weeks ago, a week and a half ago or so, and I went down to make a recording of a CD, and a new CD that I'm doing, and uh, <clears throat> it went so good we did it all in one day, and uh, I was kidding Loretta, and I told Loretta, Jeff told me you could sing, and she said, I'll kill you. <laughs> Anyway, I, I told her I was going to aggravate her today. Uh, is the kids going to Children's Church? Anybody know? You got them? Okay. So Sister Rebecca's got them, and so the kids go with this time. First Kings chapter 17. Where we're going this morning. First Kings chapter 17. I just feel good at being at church. Made me appreciate it more. I told a pastor friend of mine the other day on the phone. Some of you all will maybe see different than me on this, but it's okay. You can have your opinion. I'm going to have mine. If I had it to do over again, we wouldn't have shut down one service. I'd have just went to jail. And uh, I, I, I think we went against the book of Hebrews. To forsake not the assembly of our souls. No matter what happened. I thought about this morning. Had I been one of those three Hebrew children. When the government of their land said you're going to bow down. I guess I'd have bowed down. Not along with a lot of other churches. Pastors. You may think the ones that didn't stop service and got put in jail are crazy men. I, I, I honor them for having more faith than I've got and for being stronger in their belief than what I am. Well, everybody smile at me. First, First Kings chapter 17 and the, uh, verse number 8. The word of the Lord came unto him, unto Elijah, saying, Arise and go to Zarephath, and, and, and which belongeth to Sidon, and dwell there. You know, behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the woman, the widow woman, was there gathering of sticks. He called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord liveth, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks. I may go in and dress it for me and my son and we're going to eat it and we're going to die. This morning I want to preach on gathering two sticks. Is that alright? Last night I sat down with the word of the Lord and I began to look at this text. I noticed that the, this woman in chapter 17 Reminds me a lot of the church. Notice that this text took place in a time of famine. There was trouble in the land. And how many of y'all know that according to 
our Bible, the Apostle Paul tells us that in the last days we're going to live in peerless times. Troubled sometimes. It's a time in her life when things were hard. It was a difficult time for her and her child. And not only does the Bible allow us to know that she was a widow and that her husband had died, it also lets us know that she is raising their son all along. The husband has left her too soon and he has also left her without any wealth according to what she wrote or is written of her here. She does not have the money apparently to go out and buy more meal to put in the meal barrel nor does she have more money to go out and buy the oil. And I'm sure the time of losing her husband and turning around and realizing she's going to have to be a single parent and raise her child by herself. I'm sure that her heart was grieving. And I'm sure that there were questions still in her mind. I can hear her now uh, when she began to ask herself, why did my husband have to get sick? Or why was he taken from me? Or why did God allow this to happen? Isn't it strange this morning what we blame God for in our life? It seems like that whatever happens in our life bad, we turn it around to somehow make it God's fault or maybe God allowed it to happen. And may I say to you this morning, it is not God's fault. We're just in a fallen world. Understand the words of Jesus this morning when he said in the last days, peerless times will come. Men will be lovers of their own self. They'll be proud and blasphemers, disobedient to parents and unthankful and unholy. A truce breaker and without natural affection. In fact, I heard the words of Jesus himself when he said in the last days there's going to be trials coming upon the earth. Trials like that has never been before. Tribulation shall come like it's never been before. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And if I've overcome the world, you can overcome it too. I come this morning in the time of famine in the world. I stand here this morning in the time Her son, she saw her husband, and 
the memories of him that are left behind. Her life has been forever altered and it will never be the same. See this morning the devil can put it in our mind and in our hearts that things will never be the same. We'll give up. We'll throw the towel in. We'll say man, listen, we'll stick our head in the mud and grubs. Put our head down and say you know what? Things are going to get bad and they're going to continue to get worse. But if I read that blessed book, I see the woes that's coming upon the world. But I also see the hallelujahs and I see the victory and I hear the woes. I hear about all the media, what they're saying, how bad it's going to be. But I want to say to this church that for every woe there is, there's a shout of victory coming from the other side. For everything that this Bible says, it's going to get bad. It also says, know this, that in the last days, the Spirit of the Lord shall be poured out upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men's going to dream dreams. Young men are going to see visions upon my handmaids and upon my maidservants. Say the Lord, I'm going to pour out my spirit. Hallelujah. Can I say to you that in the last days, get your eyes off of the woes and the problems. And can I just declare unto you this morning that in the last days, do you realize the Bible said the church are blessed coming in and we're blessed going out. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. no matter what she does, no matter how many years pass by, she will always have the memory of her husband's death and the things that she's lost. And sometimes us as a church, we can get our mind on things we've lost. How bad the world may be. Come on, help me right now. Instead of looking at all the good things that we still got, in a constant, it's a constant reminder to her that her life is not complete. Something is missing. Can I share with you if you're sitting here this morning and you think you got it all together, but something is missing that God's promised you? I'm telling you this morning to hang on because the promises of God are yes and amen. Everything that God ever promised you is going to come to pass. I'm going to serve notice on the devil right now, and I want him to hear me real well. Redemption Harvest Church is not going down, it's going up. We're going to be blessed. We're not cursed. We're blessed. Can I get a witness in this house? We're going to be blessed spiritually. We're going to be blessed financially. We're going to be blessed socially. I believe in the same God that created financial blessing, spiritual blessing, social blessing can bless us right now in the name of Christ. After all she's lost, she now faces uncertain times. As if what she's been through hasn't been bad enough. Have you ever felt like you're throwing the towel in? Have you ever thought, my God, if one more thing happens, uh, she's stuck in the middle of a famine. She has the responsibility to raise and to feed her son, but she's struggling. I'm telling you this morning, I don't think that, I, that I, I, I'm outside of the will of God when I say to you this morning that there's people right here in this church that are struggling. Come on, somebody. You want to hold on to faith? You want to believe God? Can I take my jacket off and preach about it? You want to hold on to God and want to hold on to faith? But the reality is if somebody knew how, what was going on in your own mind, you're struggling right now to keep the faith. It was hard for you to get up out of bed and come to church this morning. The devil been talking to you in one ear. I'm going to tell you, you ought to turn an ear to what the Holy Ghost is saying. Hey, can I tell you, God? 
And the cruise of oil is just about gone. And I wonder if any of us have ever felt like that. Amen. I, I, I got these big barrels at the house and I started to break one. Can you imagine knowing that in her heart that she's got the responsibility to make sure her son eats. Amen. She goes to the mill barrel and looks down in the mill barrel, but I only see a handful. Amen. I only Amen. see a handful of blessing. Amen. Just a handful of meal. Let me tell you about the handful of meal. Y'all read about this? When Naomi and Ruth came back to Bethlehem and they had heard in Moab that there was bread in the house of God. And Naomi got tired of living in Moab. She said, I think I'm going to go home to Bethlehem, Judah. Judah. I heard that there's bread in the house of God there. And there's no sense in us staying here living in famine. Let us go home. But when she got there, upon entering the end to that land, traveling with Ruth, they happened by a field that was owned by a man by the name of Boaz. Boaz, come on, help me right now, begot Obed. Obed begot Jesse. Jesse begot David. May I come on and continue? Go to the book of Matthew. And Jesus was the son of David after the lineage of Mary. Help me right now. May I say to you that she entered into that field. And the Bible said that she told Ruth, said you ought to go over into that field. And around the corners of that field, this is nowhere in my notes, but around the corner of that field, Boaz, that man, he sent to us. And I want you to do this. Go to the corners of that field. And I have heard that Boaz, when he tells his reapers to reap the field, he tells and gives them instruction that in the corners of the field not to reap the corners but to leave that come on somebody for the poor leave it for the ones that's in need of a meal come on help me right now and then I heard Boaz gave the instruction to his reapers that while you're reaping in the field not only do you leave the corners of the field for the poor but there's some special people that Leftover. 
And we got used to an empty barrel. Or you just living life with no flow of oil and no bread for your hungry soul. Has the famine of the land taken a hold of you? Have you started believing what they're saying? We're not supposed to believe the report of any media. We're supposed to believe, believe the report of the Lord. Has it come to your house to rob you? The spiritual food that you used to eat? What brought the drought to her city was that there was no rain. There was no rain. No rain had brought dryness to the land and to her soul. Because without rain, we don't grow. And without rain, olive trees don't produce oil. Amen. Wow. Now, I got I, I to go somewhere. There was no rain because a man back in the name of Elijah had prayed that it rained not the days of his prophecy for three years. Right. Amen. So it's Elijah's fault that there's no rain. And God speaks to Elijah and says, Go down to Zarephath, for I have a widow woman there, and I've commanded her to sustain thee. Uh -huh. How can she sustain the man that started all this to start with? Uh -huh. When she only has a handful of meal and a little bit of oil left in the cruise. So in desperation, she decided to do what she always did. I'm going to make two cakes. I'm going to reach in the mill barrel one more time. You need to hear me. I'm going to dip in the oil one more time. I don't like to cry because I'm ugly when I cry. And I very seldom ever shed a tear, but I'm going to tell you right now. Last night, sitting studying this scripture, I heard the Holy Ghost speak to me. Say, Jody, all your church needs is to reach into that mill barrel one more time. Dip in that oil cruise one more time. So she went to find, the Bible said she went to gather sticks. That's the first text. He saw her at the gate gathering sticks. And then when he started talking to her, she said... I am gathering two sticks. Two. This woman has left her house, left the kid at home, or either had him, had him with her. But she's walking around the streets looking for sticks. Looking for two sticks. Two. Two sticks. Bless him, God. Because with two sticks, you can start a fire. Or with two sticks, you can start a fire. I'm searching for two sticks. Because ain't nothing going to change my situation of an empty barrel and an empty cruise of oil. Except right. I don't know how to make it rain. I don't know how to make meal come into that barrel. I, I don't know how to get the olive tree to produce oil again. I'm not sure how to get the wheat fields to grow again. But she knew where to get two sticks. The Bible said, listen to me, she got them at the gate. Ah, that, 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 didn't, that didn't mean much to me last night when I read it until I, real, I, I remembered that Jacob laid his head on a stone one night and wrestled with the angel of the Lord. And when he woke up the next morning, he said, I will call this place El Bethel, El meaning God, and Bethel meaning the church. And he said this, El Bethel is God was in the church. And then he said, come up. He said, I knew it not. Come. He said, the gateway to heaven is the church. Help me right now. So if you're going to look for the two sticks, 
nation, you'll not find it anywhere except the church. Because Jesus is the door, but the church is the gate. Help me right now. In that Old Testament, in order to get to the door, you've got to walk through the gate. Come on, somebody. But when you got to the temple, the door of the Lord was at the temple. See, to get to Jesus, you can't even be saved without a preacher.
Might as well die. That's the attitude of most churches. Preacher, it ain't like it used to be. The church is in a falling away. The world is terrible. We've not seen rain in years. Nobody's getting saved. We had one saved last Sunday. Right. Had a teenage girl on church saved the week before that without even having church. She's been in church long enough to get it. We've not seen rain in years. Nobody's trying to live right anymore, preacher. None of the churches have oil anymore. Look how bad it looks. And I submit to you this morning that as long as there's a barrel and as long as we still have a cruise, God can fill it up again and again and again. I dare you this morning to go beyond just a normal service and dip your hand one more time in the barrel. I dare you one more time just to dive into the oil. One more time. Yes. And about five of us. Preacher, I'm oh, really oh, moving. Oh, Thank God. Oh, What's wrong with you others? Can I tell you, God's supply never runs out. Right. Man made stuff will. Right. Maybe we need to stop trying to produce it and let God do it again. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that woman got in for the carry? That woman obeyed that man of God. She went to that house. She got that, that handful of meal scraped up in the bottom of that barrel. That leftover, she picked it up. She threw it in a bowl. She went and got that cruise of oil, that little oil that was left in there. She poured them few drops on that. She mixed it together. She stuck it in the oven. I feel the Lord all over me. She stuck it in the oven. Come on, somebody. Cause good and Lord, it takes a little while. You understand? I mean, it ain't something that just springs up. It, 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 it's produced. Help me right now. It takes a fire. Come on, help me. Uh, to produce that. She took the two sticks. May I say to you this morning, she took the cross and stirred a fire. May I say what, she, what John the Baptist said? He said, Behold, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But there's one coming after me whose shoes I'm not even worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the fire and the Holy Ghost. And not many days from hence, Jesus said, If you go to that upper room, I've done died on those two pieces of stick. I've done raised from the dead. I want you to give me that cake. I 
answer she shook her head and thought my boy is more important than that man of God but I'm going to obey she made that one cake walk back to that man of God when it got in Elijah's hand he began to eat that cake I believe he looked at her and said no go home and make those two cakes she said I don't have
We go all load up in the one truck and we're going to go. And when we get done with the job, he'll pay me in cash and we'll stop right there where, where the job is at the next gas station. We'll fill the gas station. Hopefully we got enough to get there. So they all jumped in one truck and they took off. They did the job at the end of the day when they got ready to leave. The man walked up and, and handed him a check. <laughs> he said, oh, you, 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 you don't understand. You, uh, it, it's got to be cash today. You, you always pay me in cash. Why are you paying me in check? He said, well, I don't have a dollar on me. I don't have any cash on me. He said, I only got my checkbook, so I wrote you a check. I, I forgot to stop at the bank. He goes, you don't understand. I don't have enough gas to get back. We won't even get across the mountain. And the old guy that was the contractor smacked him on the arm and said, I guess you better start praying. <laughs> when God is struck a left. So he got his men around and he said, you know what? That might not be a bad idea. He said, let's pray. He said, they started praying. God, I don't know how we're going to get back home. We don't have any money. The banks are already closed for the day. You know those divine miracles I asked you for? You're going to have to produce one. We're just going to trust in you. He said he got in an old dump truck, hit it back. They was all cramped in there, pulling a, pulling a, 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 a backhoe on a big trailer float. He said, we got coming down across the mountain at Raccoon Valley. He said, the old truck. He said, I thought, man, wonder why this thing ain't sputtered yet. He said, I mean, we went, we went 30 miles. We shouldn't have been able to go. He said, I, he said, I, I just kept on foot to the floor. He said, I, I, I was trying to get home. He said, I got home. He said, I pulled up in the driveway. He said, my men fell out of that driveway. He said, I looked back. He said, I opened that gas cap and gas started running out on the ground. He said, I stood there for 30 minutes and gas kept on running out on the ground. He said, I got to shout around that dump truck. He said, man, I shot. He said, I mean, I was going at it. He said, I thought something must be wrong. He said, I took me a big stick and I run it down into that gas can just to see how much gas was in it. He said, from the very tip of that with a rounded point to the very neck of that, he said, you can see gas on that stick. He said, we started shouting and having church. He said, what God done is he put gas in that gas tank running over. Now I said, can I be quote a little scripture and I'll be done? God will give unto you Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run over shall me and give unto your bosom. If we only trust and believe God. Have I preached all right, Brother Terry? Gather two sticks. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. I'm too old to preach like this anymore. Hallelujah. Gathering two sticks. I don't know how many of y'all, how many of y'all agree with me or not or feel this way, but I think it'd be a good day to stand around these altars and pray for one another for their barrel to run over and their crews of oil to never run dry. Barrel never ceased to produce steel. Crews of oil never failed until rain came again on the earth. When the rain came, the rain produced the grain again. And the olive tree bore olives again. And in this time of uncertainty that we're going through, you, you, you know, you know, I, I don't want to make it my back. You know, you know when our president gets up and says, 
certain networks is fake news. I'm going to say something like you put right on YouTube. All media is fake news. Yeah. There's only one report that you can trust 100% in. And it's this report. And which one we going to believe, church? Which one we going to trust in? I know it's Mother's Day and I should have preached on something about a mother. I did. You just didn't get you. What a mama. That's what I started to title this sermon was What a Mama. I think we ought to just take time to stand up here and worship the Lord and pray for one another. The third meal barrel never goes out. Cruise of oil never goes out. So while we say you come, let's just join in prayer this morning. Come on, the Lord can do it. Never let me go.
Anybody feel the presence of the Lord in this building? Well, I got a truth. Thank you, Jesus. I wouldn't trade anything I've got. Harvest. I mean, I, I just love it. I, I love it. You know why I love it? Because we can preach on the anointing and feel it. We're not afraid to be radical. We're not afraid of what people are going to think about us. I love a church that can be built on truth. Hallelujah. We got visitors with us today, and if you're a visitor, we welcome you. We thank you. So thank you. What a good God. Y'all can be y'all see if you're just a fake and fake enough. Didn't the music sound good this morning? I was told the other night I never give compliments. Giving compliments today. Write it down in a book. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. It's Mother's Day. We're gonna we're gonna honor some mothers right quick. We do this every year. We'll continue to do it, I guess, for years to come. And so <clears throat> we don't have all of our mothers here, but who is the oldest mother here? that wants to say that. Oh, let me tell a story before we get into this. Turn the cameras off, Troy. Yeah. I don't want this going out on the internet. 